In this video, I'm going to show you how to export from Onshape, import into Inventor, and then add materials, lights, uh, before exporting an image of your model. So starting in Onshape, you need to go to the model that you wish to export. Uh, it's likely to be multiple part, like this one, so it might be a part studio, or it might be an assembly. Uh, once you've opened the model you want to export, in the tab at the bottom, right click, select export. Select a sensible name, choose the step file format, and select download under the options at the bottom. Once you press OK, it's going to start exporting that file and it will ask you for uh, the folder that you want to save that in. Make sure you put it somewhere sensible so that you can find it again. Once we've done that, we're going to move on to Autodesk Inventor. Okay, now you need to open Autodesk Inventor Professional 2020. Uh, this is on the desktop machines in the graphics suite, and your teacher will show you how to do that if you've not yet worked it out. Once you've got it open, uh, we are going to select the new option, and we're going to navigate our way to uh, a template file that will allow us to work in millimeters. So you should have something like this. You need to expand the little arrow next to ENUS, select the metric tab and that should give you options where you see a millimeters appearing now you need to select in this second section where you've got these multiple blocks this is the assembly files you need to select standard and in brackets millimeters dot i a m make sure that you've selected the assembly template file once that's selected press create you should have a blank workspace to look in to work in. Um, top corner here, you'll have a um, button that says place. Just below that button, there's a little drop down arrow. Select that, and we're going to place imported CAD files. The files that we've exported from Onshape are not inventor files, so you have to import CAD files. Select that one, and you should then be able to find your way to the folder that you have saved the exported Onshape file. I saved it in this one here called export import render and it was called T light select it open it Now this is a really important step here this is going to change the way that it imports the file most things you can just leave but down the bottom here where it says assembly options make sure you have selected assembly from the three lists sorry the three options on the list this will mean that when it imports the file, the different parts of your Onshape model can be selected and then you can put different materials on those parts. If you don't do that, you will not be able to do it. So select assembly and OK. And you will see now your part floating around in space. I'm gonna select once, I'm gonna drop it and I'm gonna press the escape key. And that is my part. You can see I've got two different colors and on the left hand side here, if I expand the little plus sign next to the T-Light, we've got two different parts. They're not called what we call them in Onshape, but they, we can identify them separately and we can do things to them. You may have noticed that the model is not orientated correctly. Look, the top here of, of my view cube is, is not the top of my model, which means that when I put lighting on it, the shadow is going to fall weirdly. The floor is going to be in the wrong space. So we need to move this. Now this is uh, something which we deal with in more detail in other videos to do with uh, constraints and mates. Uh, I'm just going to show you the steps. If you follow them for this task, that will get you enough uh, to, to complete the task. Don't worry too much about the detail of what we're doing. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the little uh, plus sign next to where it says origin and I'm going to select my XZ plane. That is the floor. With that selected, select the Constrain button at the top. And now I'm going to turn my model around to the back so I can see the bottom. And I'm going to select that bottom surface. Uh, slightly irritating noise tells me that it's locked those two together. And we've now got the model correctly orientated. I'm going to press Apply. I'm using my desk cancel. Now if you're happy 
with the way that the model is orientated now we can just right click key light and select grounded what that does is it locks it in position if your model is maybe turned to the left or the right then we can do some other activities but get your teacher to show you how to do that now we are ready to put materials on the model now that we've got it the right way around we've got our top facing up we can now start putting some materials on it's very straightforward in inventor um, what we're going to do is we're going to select a part of the model and we're going to select some materials to apply first thing though up on the top here where it says appearance hit the drop down arrow make sure autodesk appearance library is selected next we're going to select the part we can't do it here because it selects everything but over in the feature tree if we expand the little um, button next to our, our model we can see that our parts are listed down here if I select one of the parts here you can see it's now highlighted in, in the main screen and I can now back up in this drop down list I've now got a whole a whole list a huge number of different materials I can try applying to it so have a play um, you can obviously hit different things first time we do it it'll ask you to remove this associativity just go ahead with that there's some chrome you get a little bit of a shine um, if you want to put something else on select part this one I'm selecting this one and then just try a different one until you're happy with whatever it's looking like I'm going to go for a, a wood and I'm going to choose birch wood's a bit of a funny one it's not always easy to um, find one that works but just have a little look at the different options until you find one you're happy with so that will do me and my other part here I'm going to select and I'm going to apply a clear um, a clear material to it so that will do there so once you're happy you've played around and you're happy with the, the materials you've applied then um, you, you can you can leave them it's not looking perfect though um, so there's a few other things that we need to do to make it look a little bit more realistic before we export it as a picture so we've got materials applied to our model but it doesn't look very realistic so we need to do a few more adjustments before we export that as a picture first we're going to change the view so along the top the ribbon bar here i want you to find where it says view and in there the first thing we're going to change is where it says orthographic we're going to make that perspective that's going to give us some vanishing points so it becomes a little bit more believable next uh, we're going to add shadows by selecting that button there and then what I would do is I would change the light theme. So this is a set of presets where you can change the lights, shadows, and the kind of backgrounds as well. Basic, as the, the default is the light, is the one that's called light theme, but you can see there's a whole load more. Now, the best thing to do is just to, to try them. And you'll see that you end up with different shadows, different kind of lights. This is a fairly flat light. Now you'll notice that this one's got a background, so if I zoom out, you see we're actually in a kind of a warehouse. That's what's giving us the light and the shadow and the reflections. So if you're happy with that, then you can keep it, but I suggest probably we don't really want the image in the background. In which case, drop down again, settings, we have an option here to turn off the background image but it still keeps the settings for the lights and shadows. So there's a whole bunch more you can look at. Some that are outside, some that are more um, intense. So just depending on what it is you're looking for. When you're happy with one, the next task is to get the view that you want. Now I recommend using the Orbit tool and you can be quite precise if you use these little handles. So you can tweak it just a little bit and then if you need to straighten it up you can use that round bar to get stuff just like that so when you're happy with the view then we're ready to proceed to the ray tracing and to exporting the image so what we're going to do is we're going to change the visual style to realistic and we're going to add ray tracing 
Now what that does is it means the computer is using a lot more power to, to work out exactly how light will fall on the different materials, the textures, and how the different parts of the model are going to reflect. Little box at the bottom here, in the bottom left corner, um, some options. It defaults to low, which means it does it quite quickly, but it doesn't really do much in the way of shadows. Um, you could run that one to begin with if you're happy with it, then I suggest you move to draft or to high. Now the way this works is if you were to move your model, it then recalculates. So each time you tweak it, it's going to take a while to then um, work its way back to a point where it's, it's nice and smooth. So I suggest that you get your, your view right before you then um, change this to draft or high. So once you're happy with it though, once you're happy with the, with the view that you've got, with the shadows, and you've let this progress bar go all the way across so that it's as smooth as it's going to be, then you're ready to save. I'm going to jump in and do it just now so you can see, but I would ask that you let that go right the way across. So if you just press the save button, you get an option here to save that file as an image. And I suggest that you use JPEG or PNG and obviously that you then put it in a sensible place in your folders so that you can find that when you, when you need to and that it has a sensible name as well. I'm going to leave that there. Hopefully that will help you to make progress on the task you're working on in graphics just now.